Sagutin mo. Okay, it's on. No. So, Hi. Hi, James. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you a uh, HRD student too? Nagka, may ginagawa si Veronica. You are a human resource management student too? Yeah, Jamie is also in our class. Yes. Oh, wow, it's a lot of super fast. Sorry. I see you, Monimer, Jamie. So, let's start. Yes. yes. Okay. Are, are you one of the recorder? recorder? Yes, I started the recording. Alright. Okay, perfect. So, yeah. for number one, you guys, the profile yes. of the matter. The country profile of Sumatra. Nina and Jamie, you've made it. Yeah, and Veerle, but Veerle isn't here and she didn't send us an email with the information. So, um, I did the labor market and the labor law. Do you understand me or yes, not? Yes, I, I do understand. Okay, perfect. Um, I just, um, yeah, I, I just write down a few, yeah. Articles um, and the thing I saw was that the Sumatra law it, it wasn't it didn't exist so I just took the law of Indonesia yeah. because it's part of Indonesia so I thought it would be uh, okay as uh, well uh, with the gender equi equality is an issue in Indonesia. Because women work uh, most no, informal sector, the work are, uh, hours are twice as the amount of men, and they get paid less. And the workforce is uh, basically in the agri agriculture. And the labor law um, is that discrimination is not allowed, so every person is available uh, who is available for a job do have to do uh, you have to accept the job opportunities and the same equal uh, equal rights. I think that is the most important things of the labor law and labor market. So that's my part. <coughs> I've done my job. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry, next one. Yeah. All right, it's me. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, I did uh, about the economic situation and politics situation. Mm. And the economical situation of Sumatra realized uh, uh, a lot of disasters. Um, first was. Uh, um, the factory was located in the area hit by the tsunami yes. and um, um, yeah uh, nowadays uh, there's a reconstruction program um, to start to increase economical growth and this program contains massive building and reconstruction <laughs> and um, that means that the local economy grow by uh, seven percent that year. That <coughs> so that means that the economic situation now um, is very uh, very up. <laughs> What's that? There was a car outside, I think. Oh. Okay, okay. and. Um, Politics situation. Um, there was a conflict between the Indonesian government and the local separatist movement. Yes. Uh, there was a conflict about unequal wealth distribution between the Indonesian government and the locals. Um, separatists also want separation from the Republic of Indonesia since 1976. That's history, <laughs> but uh, it ended in peace valley in 2005. And the biggest problem as Sumatra has is when the reconstruction boom ends, um, there will be a shortage of skilled employees. 
and that employees are hard to find and are more expensive to hire. Um, so it will be important for these companies to invest in an effective performance and talent management system. So uh, just to know. Uh, and uh, that's it. To add something, um, I've done my research too about Indonesia. They have a constitutional republic uh, aid, a system in their country. So they have a, pres a democratic country wherein they vote for president. <laughs> Uh, can you understand? What? <laughs> I am sorry. I'm talking too fast. Sorry, I can't. I can't hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I can't hear you. Actually, <clears throat> they are a republic country wherein they vote for the president. That's according to my research. Can you understand? Okay. And then. Uh, uh, yeah, a little bit. Just <laughs> I can't hear you. Uh, for your, uh, but um. I did uh, research um, from the um, from the XIZ factory case, and not another other uh, websites or books. And I would just like to share that the labor market, yeah. the unemployment rate. Well, I would take a look uh, about it. The unemployment rate for the country is five point ninety four percent. I think that would be useful for the research. Okay. Because the, the the case study is about uh, the problem about the labor market within the company, right? Where did you find that? What? Where did you find that? I've searched it in the, in the, the internet. I can just send you the link. Okay. Okay. Oh, yes. I just send you the file. And okay. Then Thank you. That's it. Next. Okay. I think um, my uh, point was number two. Yeah. Um, I the whole thing, but I have made a, um, a small thing. Um, that was I have used trom trompenaars, um, and that's with um, universalism versus particular particularism, yes. and I've made a small stuff. Uh, yeah, <laughs> small <part> stuff. <laughs> Sorry. And um, the first thing I think Sumatra is a universalism culture. Um, the standards are very, very important in Sumatra, and uh, people are equal. And um, yeah, they uh, incline to follow the rules no matter the situation. And for the best way to do <coughs> fairly all the cases. So I think that is. Um, uh, describes Sumatra universalism. You have, I think, seven points, um, but I have made two of it. Um, the second is uh, individualism versus communicatorism, and I think um, Sumatra is communicative because um, yeah, they listen to the government and they um, are not so very individual. And um, I think the community comes before the individual, and people are mainly orientated towards common goals and objectives. So that's I think Sumatra. But I can can um, research much about the culture, so it's really difficult um, maybe more about uh, what Nina said about Indonesia so I've made two points and the rest of the points I um, have to um, research more about it and have a about it okay and then it's our turn well, yes. <laughs> uh, well actually she's not here so I'm just gonna discuss about my research so there are two theories involving the for the question. So the <coughs> first one, uh, the first one is about shine. So according to my research, she has a diagram that uh, illustrates. Can you understand? Yeah. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. She she has this theory that um, that defines an organization's culture, and actually she used a diagram to explain. A company's organization, overall organization. So it is composed with artifacts, 
corporate culture and espouse values. <clears throat> now you can hear me now. Yeah, perfect. Okay. okay. So, so we're in values. Values. Yeah. I'm still having a hard time setting up my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Where are uh, spouse values? So, uh, these are public statements, according to my research. It's a uh, public statements about the organizational values. It's actually their core values, which are positive, creative, and innovative thinking. The second one is working as part of worshiping God, praying, and gratitude. So, this is basically what they are work. What uh, they are mm, having values as an organization. So it's, bas it's basically that. But I think the deeper one is the basic assumptions and values. That's the complicated one, wherein it is intangible and spoken, and it is difficult to be seen in the culture because um, it is rooted from shared value and as the time goes by it becomes a shared assumption wherein the people being used to it like for example praying i uh, example praying since it is part of their culture as muslims as their religion in islam it became not just a core value in their organization but became part of them as a person can you get me yeah Yes. Yeah. So there, so they became to, they tend to subcon they put it in their subconscious, but still it exists. Praying is still praying still exists in their culture, but they don't need to tell that already to their uh, newcomers because it is part of of uh, it became part of their subconscious and they do it uh, normally. They do it normally. So, uh, people who are accustomed to the works of their organization are the ones who can really understand them. And this cannot be measured in quantitative terms. So there, I, I think uh, I identified in the case study that there are two basic assumptions and values, which is their deep faith in God and the paternalistic culture. because. One of their culture is being um, uh, one of their it exists that they have paternalism in the system. So, uh, in my, uh, according to Webster's dictionary, it paternalism is a system under which an authority undertakes to supply needs or regulate conduct of those under its control. So it became uh, there is a tendency that in terms of in terms of assessing their co-members or in, in terms of assessing their subordinates, they became lenient and favor their subordinates rather than tell the truth that, uh, for example, their members are not really working well, but because they are having this culture that they wanted to have a close relationship and care with their members, they tend to just put um, five star or rate them as good enough. So there, that's the so, values and the basic. So because the values. So basically, the whole theory is just about the beliefs and the assumptions in yeah. an organization. So yeah. uh, the other theory is about um, the the culture within. Also about the culture, but. It is based on Cameron and Keane's research. Well, actually, okay. they identified four kinds of cultures within an organization. But I focus more on the hierarchy culture, wherein it's, it satisfies the criteria of, uh, of the operations, of the processes within the, the company. Well, of course, uh, they have a leader type, wherein they are more on a coordinator or a monitor for the employees because they are not um, they're not not um, letting just letting their employees to do what they need but they are um, they are giving policies rules 
which should be followed. It's competing values framework. And for me also, it's kind of uh, more suited to the case study that we're doing. Even though I focused in science, science of theory, but I think as I research with competing values framework here with Robert Keane and Cameron, it's uh, appropriate because it focuses in flexibility, control, flexibility, control, and external and internal environment. So we could use everything that were in the case study. Aside from that, it is it accompanies an assessment and like where we could use this tool to uh, we could put it in our <coughs> recommendations to use this tool so that the company would have a better assessment of their members. It also uh, in this in this framework we could also identify what kind of what kind of organizational culture they have right now and what we can recommend to them as to create a better um, culture. They have four, just like Veronica said, they have four um, elements, I think, which is the family or the clan. Do you have guys the... Veronica, did you send the... No, not yet. I'll just send them after the meeting. I will send you the, our research, but basically it has four that um, if we would identify them and analyze, they could fall into four quadrants, which is the family or the clan. And another one is the ad hoc, ad hoc parasy culture, which are uh, family is about personal growth. Ad hoc parasy culture is about being open, innovative, and they have synergy in the in the. Uh, company. Another one is market oriented, which focuses on productivity and um, profit. And another one is the hierarchy, which uh, they are they are focused in discipline and order in the organization. So from there, we identify uh, what is ex what are what is their existing culture if they are uh, if they are more on the per on the family side, if they are more on the market side, and then from that we could. Uh, make recommendations to create a better culture that would impact that would impact all the family, the all the quadrants, the family and the others. So there. Uh, we'll send you the okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. I think we should talk about about the transcript too. So um, the first meeting we had is not recorded. So I think I'll just create a transcript. I so the first transcript is just, uh, the first transcript is just about the distribution of of the task and then yeah. for today uh, I think I recorded not all of the the things we talk about but I will create I will do that the transcript can you understand? Yeah. Yes. Oh. It's perfect. How about the next meeting? Who will be uh, assigned? Who will be assigned? Um, Who would like to do it? Assigned? Yeah. Just to do the transcript. Well, oh, okay. Uh, maybe one of us, of uh, us together. And maybe some. Uh, maybe one of you can record the video next meeting. Yes, but you guys have to record every video. Oh yeah. I've recorded this. And what? you also have to make French scripts. Mm, I'll try to send you the video maybe day after tomorrow. Okay. Sixteen. Okay.
it is easier for us as we already uh, yeah, draw up the presentation mm -hmm. okay. for next week. Okay. Maybe highlight some topics for in the presentation. Mm. Okay. I don't know. <coughs> yeah, I think it's a good uh, idea. So if everyone um, who highlight the uh, um, yeah, most important things and then we uh, send to each other and then we will discuss it uh, in the next um, meeting. next meeting. <laughs> um, actually, Are you guys going to do the paper? Hmm? Uh, what do you say? Are you going to do the paper? The are we going to do it already, the paper? Because I think uh, we to have it simultaneously. We can simultaneously do it in Google Docs so we can see what oh, yes, um, yeah. Yeah. percentage are we uh, on. Actually, okay. we not talk about the recommendations for the case study. Oh, that's maybe a good point for the next meeting. Um, yeah, I think we uh, could send uh, the documents to each other and then we could make um, uh, all of us uh, recommendations <coughs> and we can discuss the recommendations in the f uh, next meeting. Okay. okay. Are you guys finished already with the others? With the other parts? Like the profile of Sumatra? Almost. Almost. Okay. Yes? Oh, almost. Okay. So. We could transfer it in, or we could have a separate in Google Docs, and we could also read the or the other parts, so that we could also have the recommendations prepared already. Yes. That's okay. Yes. Veronica, uh, what? what are you saying? No, no, no. Okay. Um, so maybe we could um, make an appointment to send uh, the things to each other. Okay. Hello. Hello? Hmm? Jamie, Ma you're the new. Ah no, you were absent last time. Yes. Oh hello, I'm Nash. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Nice to meet you too. <laughs> so, so uh, maybe we can send the documents to each other tomorrow. Tomorrow. And okay. uh, is that okay? Can I send yeah. the transcript on the 16th? Yeah, the it's okay. That's perfect. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. And so we can uh, study the documents and we can make recommendations. So we can discuss the recommendations Friday. Okay. okay. Is that okay? Yes. And yeah. maybe if, if we have uh, things to discuss, or maybe you have things to discuss what you have read in the documents, we can also discuss that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Because I've seen the format of our case study. Our, our professor said it's just, it's just a guide. A guide but are we going to follow the, that format? Which format? Have you seen it? Yeah, yes, we did. X, Y, Z? What? This one? I can see Jamie, but... No, not that one. Uh, our professor sent a format for... Um, of how are we going to do the paper? The transcript, I mean. Oh, I think we have It has this executive summary, the body, and the others. I think we should also start on the assign paper. this. Okay. Can you send it to us so we can send, okay. uh, see what it is? Okay, I'll just oh, yeah. download I think it. I'll you later. And then we could also discuss it on Friday. Yes. But I, I don't know which which uh, thing you have, but maybe if you send it, we can see it and we can... Uh
Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Bye. thank you. Bye. We will see you Bye. 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 Bye.